sir, sir. You call 911 to whoever's around. If you're not, if no one else is around, get your cell phone out, dial 911, put it on speaker. So our strategy obviously is to get the best outcomes for the patient. We were following the national standards on how to do good CPR, quality CPR over time. But we've noticed we kind of hit a lull. I mean, we were hitting 10, 15% survivability of people leaving the hospital. So we decided as a service, as a city, we want to get better at that. So what does that mean? We went to a few different conferences and all the leaders from basically around the country, California, New York, all the big cities came through and gave us the best uh, practices for the outcomes of the patient. So we're looking at our 15 to 20 percent survivability. These people are seeing 50, 60, 70 percent. So our goal is now to reach that and by learning their different techniques, which we now have put into play, uh, we're hoping to see our numbers increase drastically. Waiting for some more help to arrive. The fire department, let me take over? Yes, please. So biggest thing, we don't want you to stop CPR until someone takes over for you. Or if you're too tired, no one's there yet. Take a break, go back at it. That's the best thing for this patient. With the new system, we have people that uh, are paramedic engines that arrive on scene first. They're starting CPR, they're doing better quality CPR. They have uh, new devices that tell them either to push harder on the chest, how fast their CPR is doing, and we're not taking pauses as we're doing CPR. So we're doing continuous CPR as we arrive on scene, no stopping. We don't stop for more than four to five seconds of doing CPR, and that's just basically to switch personnel. Uh, we're getting airway devices in faster, so we have that hands freed up. Someone puts the airway device in, they're taking care of the airway, someone's taking care of compressions, and then we're cycling out. Police are a big help in this. They get on scene. They sometimes get their AED on before, and they're starting continuous CPR right then until we get there. Again, the biggest thing we want to push home too is early CPR saves all lives, or most of the lives that go into cardiac arrest. So if you or someone you know doesn't know CPR, the biggest thing is learning early CPR. That's going to give us the best opportunity. Whenever you're ready. You ready? Jake? Yeah, I'm ready. Sam, you ready? Yep. Ted, you ready? I'm ready. On three, one, two, three. So, sliding the device under, right back to CPR. When we started this, we wanted to start with a systematic approach. So we have a new, what's called a wheel of survival, basically gives us key steps on what we need to do for best patient outcome. So, early CPR, early airway, good quality CPR. Then we use our mechanical device, which does CPR for us. Again, frees up hands for us to do other skills like starting IVs, um, giving new medicines, or giving medicines at the correct time, let the CPR going through well, and uh, moving on from there. So it may seem like we are on scene for 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes, but what that is is we're waiting for the heart to restart again. In the perfect situation, around the, glo or around the United States, you're seeing about 20 to 25 minutes is when people's hearts are restarting. Uh, just kind of a spontaneous restart. So CPR is working, their brain starting to get reperfused, so we're getting that oxygen back up to the brain, and people are seeing, you know, once we get the pulse back, we want to move on to the next step, and that's transport to the hospital in the perfect scenario. Keep pumping on the chest, keep doing CPR.